I'm wondering though, uh, and I'm not trying to be offensive no. in, any, in any sense, but I, I've had debates with a lot of um, blue haired feminists and these types yeah. of people. And when I talk about my interest in Islam, they bring up the fact that the prophet Muhammad, he was married to a girl that was um, underage. What is, what is the response to that? I, Cause I don't know how to respond to that in a debate. Yeah, man. So, I mean, we've done, I'm part of something called the Sapiens Institute, uh, which is um, the, the institute which I co-founded. Um, uh, we've done a three-part series on, on this question because it's one of the most common questions in the West. Like, why is it that the Prophet Muhammad, you know, married uh, Aisha at the age of nine or th there was, a you know, intimacy at the age of nine and so on. And so uh, the first thing I would say is that if you want a more detailed answer of what, you know, I'm about to mention now, you can obviously go in and see these. I've done three part series. The second thing I would say is that, look, I mean, first and foremost, you could technically believe in Islam and not believe that the Prophet Sallallahu or the Prophet Muhammad married Aisha at the age of nine. In other words, it's not something, it's not an article of faith. One must believe that the Prophet Muhammad married you know, Aisha at the age of nine uh, or uh, that there was some kind of consummation. I'm not saying this is not, this is a red herring that many people try and bring about in order to uh, create some kind of a distraction to the key tenets of Islam. But let's take the historical account because quite frankly, there are some revisionist accounts which some people have brought forward today and said, no, she wasn't nine, she was 18 or she was 21 or whatever. I don't, looking at it myself i don't agree with those accounts i think that those accounts are not correct i think it's correct that he married her at the age of nine that's what happened and that's something that she mentions herself in fact and it's narrated in sahih al-bukhari uh authentically so the question is why and how the real answer is bro you're kind of alluding to it before which is that we have social constructs social constructs not the kind that the feminists and the uh, the ones on the far left are talking about, which is that they say sex is a, f a social construct, or that, like for example, Judith Butler said, sex itself, biological sex, the the penis in a sense is a social construct. We're not talking about it. We do have some social constructs, and ironically, I think the social constructs are those things which cannot be empirically uh, justified. And I think one of those things is the idea of childhood. I'll I'll be totally honest with you and tell you, how do we determine what is a child? I mean. Historically, we've always understood the idea of childhood as corresponding with either biological ability or psychological capability or a combination of both. Uh, the ability of somebody to, uh, to work or to, or to be domestic or have effective uh, domesticality and all these kinds of things. When I looked at the issue from a historical perspective, I started to realize why the West in particular has started to redefine what it means to be a child. And I think I've got the answer because, you know, in the, in the 1800s, you'll find that, quite frankly, people were getting married in the United, King in United Kingdom at the age of 10 or 12. And in America, all the way down in Delaware, it was actually nine years old or seven years old. People were getting, It was legal to get married at this age. So when did it shift? It actually shifted here in the United uh, Kingdom when uh, 1914, obviously, as you know, 1914 to 1918, there was World War I. Um, and after World War I, there was an infrastructural mess uh, in parts of Western Europe. And the ideas of education started to, to change. So legislatively, there was a law that was put forward in 1924 uh, or 1924. Uh, 25 i cannot remember exactly the year but was it it was a law that changed the marriage age from 12 years old to about 16 years old so in england where we're where i'm speaking from the the age to get married was 12 and then it changed to 16 now you might ask what is the reason actually funny enough ironically once again there was part of it was to do with uh, some protesting from uh, the first wave feminists I looked at some Hansard records, which are basically the records of Parliament and so on. So I was wanting to see what exactly the reason was. Another part of the reason, in my opinion, was the fact that education started to be seen as, or when somebody would finish education, would start to be seen 
as the appropriate time of when adulthood begins. So in the United Kingdom, for example, um, I think in America it's very similar, the age until compulsory education is 16 years old. So it's almost as if they're telling us, look, you're not a real man, you're not a real woman, you're not, a, you're not an adult yet until you finish the educational program that we have in place for you. You have to be 16 and then you're, a, you're an adult then. Now, this is completely alien in the historical landscape. I mean, this has never been how any civilization, almost at any point in time, almost at any point in time, is 6,000, 5 to 6,000 years of human civilizational existence has ever understood what it means to be an adult. Now, I'm not saying, therefore, we should change it and go back to our old days, because it's very difficult now to get a young person of today to do the actions that they were doing yesterday. But what I am saying is that it makes no sense to take these social constructs, which are not based on biological fact, they are merely social constructs, literally things which uh, have been put in place or have been understood to be okay, aesthetically pleasing, relativistic understandings by uh, liberal people after the, after the First World War and Second World War to be more uh, particular, it became even more pronounced because there was an even bigger mess then infrastructurally and then they needed education even more to, to, to fix up economies. And so this idea of childhood corroborating or corresponding or being commensurate with uh, educational age or the end of childhood being when the edu education ends became even more prominent. So what I'm saying is that, yes, it, it did happen according to uh, the most authentic historical uh, account. And no, we don't think there's any problem with it at all. We think that uh, it's just because we have a different idea of what it means to be a child, which can be tracked historically. But now, if the situation has changed, we'd say that the general principle in Islam is, you, you know, you can do what you kind of want, so long as, I'm not going to say you can do what you want so long as you're harming. You can do, you can marry whomever you want to marry, so long as it doesn't cause them harm, physical and psychological. So, for example, if I marry a 100-year-old woman, or a sneaker, if you marry with your tank top, a hundred year old woman, and you know, and you and you get involved with her intimately, she might die. I mean, she or she might have some kind of uh, health problem. So we would say that, well, if you if you were to be intimate with a fourteen year old uh, or you know, thirteen year old who's got huge hips and huge breasts and huge body, I, I mean, quite frankly, we would say uh, it's not it's not going to have the same effect medically. I mean, no one can make the argument. But on in these countries where we live in now. One is legal and one is both are one is illegal. So, for in other words, you can't marry a hundred year old woman, but you can marry that that girl that's you know with the, you can't be. This, you're a pedophile if you if you go for the girl that's got the hips. And once again, pedophilia is very relative because if you go to uh, Russia, the age of consent is fourteen, but in England it's sixteen, and parts of America is eighteen, and other parts of America is eighteen, and other parts of the world is twenty one. So, one man's pedophile is another man's good citizen. A liberal actor. So uh, the, the point of who sets the age is another issue because it's, it's very arbitrary at this point. But we're not saying, therefore, we should go back to a, a time where the age is not set. We're not saying any of that stuff. We're just saying that to use this as an argument against the veracity of the truthfulness of the religion of Islam is, um, is uh, unsatisfactory, I would say. What do you think about that? And feel free to push back. I think that's a that's a good explanation. Um, I think nine is very young. It's nine is very young. That's yes. That's I mean, nine is very age. young. Yeah, yeah. It's very young to us. You see. How old was Muhammad at the time? I, I don't. I, we don't need to stay on this subject. But there's there's other we could talk. I was just no, wondering because no, in, in in debates, I want to figure out how to continue because that's that always comes up. Especially from Christians, I agree. Um, I agree. When when the debate comes up, I, I wanted to see how to how to navigate that. Okay. Well, well, how what is young? What does it mean to be young? To be innocent, to be childlike, and even not even going through puberty. Also, physically not matured yet. Okay. Beautiful. Excellent. So you've mentioned some key terms, right? Innocence and puberty, because these are things which are measurable. Now, now we can start to talk about it. Uh, frankly, we believe that Aisha, at the time, she had gone through puberty. So we actually have evidence of Aisha saying that she had gone through puberty at that time. So that's one aspect. The reason why he didn't marry her before, because she hadn't gone through puberty yet. Now, if you look at the numbers of people that go through puberty at whatever age, you will find a percentage of people even today 
that go through puberty at the age of uh, nine. So yes, nine is very young. This is what some of the revisionists are.